In the words of the great actor Tommy Wiseau, You're telling me apart, Lisa! Lisa Frankenstein, released a couple of weekends ago here in 2024, and is directed by Zelda Williams, who's also directed such films like Shrimp and Kappa Kappa Die. And this film is starring Catherine Newton, Cole Sprouse, Liza Soberano, Henry Elkenberry, Joe Cress, and Carla Gugino. Lisa Swallows is a strange, weird, and lonely girl in high school, and she is still reeling from the recent murder of her mother, the quick marriage of her father to her stepmother, and the brand new high school that she has to attend during her senior year. The only comfort she get is from gravestones at a nearby secluded cemetery that one night a huge ass lightning bolt strikes and the young man from the tombstone comes to life and all he wants to do is be close to his Lisa. So the movie starts off in this very weird tone where it feels like it wants to be a high school party atmosphere or coming of age film and then it switches to this monster movie of some kind with zombies and stuff and then it evolves into a subtle love story between Lisa and this zombie who comes up to her room and that's where he lives basically for the rest of this movie and the more that she is with him the more confidence she gets within herself. She starts dressing differently because he starts dressing her. And all of the people who have done her wrong in her life, like her stepmother, the asshole science buddy who is like sexually groping her and assaulting her at parties, the asshole, she sees it as an opportunity to them. This movie is very, very weird but I like it. For the first half, I am really struggling to feel and find what the tone of this movie is. I'm trying to get into it. At times it feels serious and at other times it feels like this is a parody. A parody of another love story from high school. Kind of just feels like a parody film. Like what, what are we making here? But then as things get going, more people start dying and Lisa seeing her life as she knows it coming to an end, whether that's in jail, whether it's the electric chair with all the murders that are happening. That's when I start getting into this because the the theme of it seems to level out in the last 40 minutes of this film. Leading up to it though, it is weird. And that's not a bad thing. It's just very strange. And I think that may be the reason why this film is not doing so well in the box office because I don't under I don't know how you market this thing. I don't know how you advertise this to the general public that'll make people crave and want to go to the theaters to see this. This film actually felt more like it should have been a streaming show. Like the story felt like it could have gone on for six to ten episodes of a series of some kind. To put it in this movie, it just it just felt weird. It felt weird. But again, the weirdness it's confusingly cool. Like, I, I like this. I like how Lisa is gaining confidence in taking matters into her own hands. Of course, those matters that she takes into her hands is flat out murder, but it's, I guess you see the purpose behind it. You see why she does the things. And then the aftermath of those events and taking certain body parts from them and then sewing them onto the new zombie. Again, I'm finally realizing why this is called Frankenstein. But part of me was thinking, like, is this going to be, like, a remake of Frankenhooker? Because that was an amazing, amazing film. But I think they already did that with Poor Thing. But how they go about sewing, like, the ear on and the hand on and using the tanning booth because that electrifies you for some reason, that ignites the nerves in <laughs> the flesh to where it melds to the zombie and then he can hear and then he can hand and then he can... Well, I'm, I'm not going to spoil that last one. Catherine Newton... Again, just with the tone of this movie, her performance just seems weird and awkward. But again, I like it. This whole film is such a conundrum for me. Like, I don't understand. It's so strange, but it's so intriguing. And... <laughs> just loved watching it. The aesthetic of this movie, how it just reminded me of the 80s and all of just the bright, bombastic colors that we get from rooms and from houses. Just gaudy, awful, ugly shit, and I liked it. I feel like my wife right now when she's looking at a dress or some appliances for the house, and they just look god awful. Like, look so ugly. And she says, oh my god, this is so ugly, and I love it so much. That's how I feel with this movie. It's so weird. It's so ugly. It's so tacky. It's so strange. 
and yet I really enjoyed my time watching it. If you do end up watching this movie, please watch it to the end. Don't get up and walk out or turn it off and forget about it, because then you're not going to have the full experience. I think if you watch this film from beginning to end, you will understand the overall tone, and it will it will hit you better, as opposed to you starting like the first 30 minutes of this movie, and then turning it off for walking out of the theater and not finding out where it goes. Please, I implore you to watch this movie all the way through if you choose to. I'm gonna give Lisa Frankenstein three out of five Blu-rays. Not exactly what I had in mind, but not bad. So guys, have you seen Lisa Frankenstein? What did you think about it? Or if you've never seen it before and you stumbled across it because of this video, then comment below and let me know what you thought about it. And as always, if you like what you see here, if you like my take on movies, then hit the subscribe button to make sure you hit that bell. See you all the next time I release next movie review. So guys, I will see you next time on the channel, but in the meantime, be well, be good to each other, and go watch a movie. Take care, guys.